what's happening YouTube what's up and what's happening we're gold winging our way back to Pittsburgh we've been at the National Biker Roundup all week long and <laughs> another one of life's great truths all good things must come to an end <laughs> back to life back to reality For some, so we're off on a two-day journey. Um, our first stop is going to be in Atlanta, Georgia, and my brother and I—I'm joined by my brother. He's behind me on the GL1500, and we're going to ride into Atlanta. And we're going to stop and see some family, and then get back on the road and make our way, possibly into Charlotte or just a little bit north of Charlotte before we pack it in for the night and then we'll get up and make our way into Pittsburgh from there. So that is the plan for the two-day journey home. And it has been an experience. I usually, this is actually the riding that I like to do right here. I uh, love my free spirit brothers to death, I do. And I don't have a personal art against anybody in the group. But the riding that I like to do is with one, maybe two other people. When you get into large group situations, there are a lot of dynamics that, that happen in large group uh, situations that I'm not necessarily 100% comfortable with just being the kind of person that I am. So this ride going back is just me and one other person it's a lot more comfortable for me as a rider, as a person. Um, this is how I like to ride. I like to ride, you know, with either solo or with, like, like I said, one or two other people. But the roundup was a great experience. It was a great experience. We uh, had a lot of fun. Met a lot of people. <laughs> Saw a lot of, of bikes and particularly a lot of gold wings. If you haven't seen some of my other videos about the Roundup, take some time and go back and check them out. Never mind. Never mind. Um, if, you haven't, if you haven't seen them, go back and check them out. It's saw some really nice stuff. <laughs> Some bit, and you know, and it, it was everything. It was people from all walks of life, people of all ages. Um, particularly, the thing that I liked the most was that I saw everything from people who their bikes are 100% stock and they're just in it for the ride and the experience. And there's other people who do a minimal amount of accessorizing, just enough to make life on the road convenient and then there are uh, people who not only are they making life convenient but they are also making it so they don't have to stop at any hotels and stuff like that so they're pulling motorcycle campers which I gotta say I think I'm interested in one now I'm definitely interested in pulling a trailer I'm gonna have to spend some time and money learning how to do that and then investing in, in the trailer that I want um, I saw some really nice ones while I was down here, and it's, it's a difference between seeing seeing it on YouTube and seeing it in person. And what I saw in person, I was really, really impressed with. So there will be some some next steps for me where life on the road is concerned, and I'm really looking forward to. It. I got some pretty big plans. So yeah, there were, the last thing was people who were just way over the top with, <laughs> with their accessories, uh, with their accessories, and you know the show bikes. You know they're pulling them down there and they're showing them off, but they didn't necessarily ride any great distance to get there because the bike isn't made for that. It's, it's, it's in my opinion over accessorized. You know they look nice. Don't get me wrong, and I'm sure they put a lot of money into it. They're very proud of what they 
assembled. But those bikes aren't dressed up for the ride. Those those bikes are dressed up for the show. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you're into. Uh, just so it happens to not be what I'm into. I think I'd like to strike a balance between the accessorizing and the touring and, and being able to still get out on the road, uh, make sure my bike is street legal, that it's mechanically sound, but still that it looks good and that you know the, the music that I play sounds good. So I did, you know, several audio upgrades, and you can go back and check those videos out. I mean, there's about five of them now, but yeah, I, um, I've done some some audio upgrades there, just to not necessarily even to show off for other people, but to be able to hear music at highways when I'm riding throughout the city. I, I heard some stuff yesterday that was. Extremely impressive. Extremely impressive, but might be a little bit much for me if I'm just riding around the city. I saw some Goldwing trikes that I'm really, really impressed with too. Um, I, I've been impressed with them, but to see them again, to see them in person and to see them on YouTube are two different things. And we got a chance to see a couple up close and personal. And, they were nothing short of impressive, so I can't uh, wait to start executing my plans where that where that's concerned. One hundred percent impressed with <laughs> the trailers <laughs> with the slow cookers in them. Oh man, they they cooking food and riding down the street at the same time. Dinner is ready when they get where they're going. I, I think I was probably the most impressed with that. So shout out to the Atomic Dogs. I don't know uh, what city they're out of, but very, uh, it was very, very nice to meet you all. And I wish you all well, if many of you all are watching this channel. We're headed up. Interstate 75 North. And we'll ride this into Atlanta. And then eventually cross over to uh, 85 North. And that'll be the, the start of the, really the start of the journey home. Because Atlanta's like home away from home. We had to spend any length of time in Atlanta. It wouldn't be a problem at all. There would be no hotels involved. <laughs> there would be no fast food involved. It would be all, it would be all family involved. So Atlanta's great city, great, great place. If you have to spend any, if I have to spend any time off of the road, there Atlanta's home away from home. One thing I know about here, I didn't have to come to a roundup to figure this out because I spent enough time down south and traveling down south pretty much all my life. Even though I'm from, born and raised in Pittsburgh, uh, my family roots are down here in southern Georgia. So, like I said, I'm right at home down here. But the one thing that I did not have to come to a roundup to discover is that the southern hospitality is real. People were just genuinely nice. <laughs> down south and you don't you don't find that kind of hospitality up north um, and I guess I've been living up north long enough now to understand that I'm good there's my brother I'm letting him take the lead for a while we use the center communication systems and I believe we got them figured out. Like I said, I was having trouble with my with my 20S, but we were able to finally get connected. His just simply isn't charged right now, so he's got it plugged into a portable charger, and hopefully by the time we leave Atlanta, 
still be charged up and we'll be connected to be able to talk our way through the trip. If need be, but there's going to be... I see a trailer in my future though. And I don't know if that's going to be a motorcycle camper, something that I can kind of spend the nights at. Because uh, I, I wouldn't have minded... I wouldn't have minded staying at the campground under some different conditions. Uh, first of all, we had a lot of weather events happening up here. A lot, a lot of wind, a lot of rain, and the campsite that we set up was destroyed several times by Mother Nature. So we were finding ourselves having to come back to the campsite and rebuild tents that had been knocked down and everything else that we we're able to stay at a hotel, which is, you know, which was great, obviously. There's a 1500 right there. Brother on a 1500. I don't know him from anything, but it's just kind of been this kind of week, and so. Maybe one day he'll catch gold winging on YouTube and see himself. there but I think if I'm going to be spending the night at campgrounds I would like a hard shell cover and not just a, a tent tent I'm not that that guy so <laughs> I guess I have learned that um, by next year by the next time we do this and it's going to be in Baton Rouge Louisiana and that's going to be exciting to be able to put quite a few states uh, on my resume. As somebody who's relatively new to the touring game, I now have, well Pennsylvania obviously, I'm, I'm from PA. The first state after that was Ohio because that's actually where I bought this gold wing. I bought it from a man in Youngstown, Ohio and brought it back to uh, my hometown in Pittsburgh. But now we're adding West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. To my touring states, I know I've got a long way to go to catch up with some of you. And we'll see how that goes. I, I have some, some goals that I would like to meet. But, oh yeah, back to the to the campground situation. I think if I were to get something like a teardrop trailer, maybe. A teardrop would be pretty cool. I've, I've seen some pretty cool looking ones. That'll, that'll be pretty uh, exciting. And I think that's what I want to do for for next year. But I think also pulling a teardrop might not be necessarily advantageous where riding with a large group of bikes is concerned. So if I were to do something like that, I'm thinking I'll probably leave out a day or two ahead of the group. Or behind the group, depending on what works out logistically. <laughs> All right, YouTube, we're leaving Atlanta now. We're on our way to Pittsburgh, so it's going to be a two-day journey. It's not going to be done all at once. So we're planning to pull into Charlotte, North Carolina tonight. And then we'll make the seven hour run into Pittsburgh tomorrow. So. I just got that little battery lady telling me. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, there, there might be something. Either it didn't charge, either it was never charging in the first place, or it's just not holding a charge. Other than 
of Pittsburgh, this is where I grew up. Went to college down here, had plenty of family down here. There was just no way Big Tom and I could come passing through Atlanta and not see our family. So we got here and we spent about three or four hours with family, having a good time, and now we're back on the road. And it's Mission Pittsburgh. <laughs> ride it up uh, into Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, between um, Pittsburgh and Perry, Georgia, Charlotte, North Carolina is about the halfway point. So even though we stopped for several hours in Atlanta, and Charlotte is only four hours from here, maybe four and a half, uh, it represents the halfway point. So we'll pull into Charlotte, stay the night in a hotel, and get up. And like I said, Pittsburgh is about seven hours from there so we do our runs in about excuse me in about two hour intervals either two hours or 120 miles whichever one comes first usually when we get ready to make a stop somewhere so at that rate um, it'll be basically three two hour runs and we'll have about an hour and some change left after that will be running into Pittsburgh. And this adventure called the National Biker Roundup will be over for this year. And would have been a successful trip. And the longest and farthest either one of us has been from home on our bikes. And it's been it's been a good one been a good one. I had a little anxiety about it. I was excited about it at the same time. But I did have a little bit of anxiety about it. But I'm really glad that I made the trip. And it's been a lot of fun. It was not without incident. It hasn't, it hasn't been completely without incident. But you roll with those punches too. So... We're out about a day ahead of our Free Spirit Brothers uh, just because of work schedules and everything else. So we left the day earlier than they did. They'll be making their leg from Georgia start tomorrow. And then they'll run into Pittsburgh on Tuesday. A lot of people in, a lot of people in the group say that uh, <laughs> once we get home to Pittsburgh, they're planning to garage their bikes and not look at them, not touch them for a few days. And I'm thinking to myself, not me. When we get back to, when we get back to Pittsburgh, it, it'll be back to life, back to reality. I miss my kids, so I'm excited to get back and see their faces. But I ride my bike, if I don't have my children with me, my, this bike is how I get around town as well. And so there, there won't be any breaks and lulls in the action just because of being tired of the motorcycle. So I can't say I agree with that notion, but you know, they're, they're allowed to feel how they feel too. But no, I'm, I'm not at all <laughs> motorcycled out. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to start planning the next one. The next big long run. And so what you're hearing now are just my kind of open thoughts about the experience, what it's been so far, and what I'm looking forward to. I did like the idea of a camping experience. I did not like the idea of sleeping in a tent. <laughs> and we thankfully had a, uh, a hotel that we were able to go and stay at because there were quite a few storms that came through there. But I think, like I said, with the right equipment, you know, you can brave a storm too. That's why I'm thinking that a teardrop is ways and, and a police warning. I know I'll be glad when we get out of Metro Atlanta. 
Oh, stay there. some semblance of hard walls around me and not uh, some kind of a tent so I would love to pull like a teardrop and I just really think that that would be an amazing experience got some time to plan for that about a year out to plan for it and we'll see if I can make that happen it wouldn't be the only time I used it if I had one, that would be for sure. Now, it definitely would not be the only time I ever used it. If I had it, uh, we're going to get on 85 North there, headed towards Greenville, South Carolina. Alright, we should be able to set up cruising speed. We're going to ride this right out of Atlanta <laughs> and into North Carolina. North Carolina will hop on Interstate 77. Still going north. We'll take that all the way to Summersville, West Virginia. And Summersville, West Virginia will grab a state route, Route 19. And that'll cut the bottom corner of 77 off and save us from a bunch of toll roads. And then we'll have 79 in West Virginia, and that, that will run us right into downtown Pittsburgh. South Carolina where we stopped on the way down. We're about 90 miles outside of Charlotte. And we're going, oh God, what's that smell? You okay back there? Oh, what? <laughs> Whatever it was, I'm on past it. Are you, you all right back there? Right. You may as 
well say what's up to YouTube. What's up, yeah. YouTube? <laughs> Out here, big, big time thinks he's just up because he got his colors this week. <laughs> yep, yep. So we are. Uh, that was a nice, smooth run from Metro Atlanta up here to wherever we are in South Carolina. I think we're pretty close to Greenville. Now, probably a few few miles outside of Greenville and there's lightning up ahead that's gonna make things interesting I say if it starts really thundering like really good I say we pack it in for the night <laughs> hopefully we make it to Charlotte before that happens because even though it's lightning it's not terribly cloudy not terribly break out the rain gear for this leg of the run so we'll see where it goes. Yeah, let's we'll see what happens. Alright. Okay, so my my GPS, I just put in Charlotte, North Carolina. I didn't put in like a hotel or yeah anything like that so it's the route that it has us going is going to put us on like state route 74 16 and then to 74 east we don't yeah we, we don't we're not doing all that we're going to stay on 85 to 485 and while i'm flying up who's that defender supply not the police he'd probably like you to think he's the police <laughs> but not really the police or the police <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going that fast anyway. I'm on my helmet. I got I got you in my helmet speakers. But I had to I had to Oh yeah, I got I got microphone inside of the helmet. So they're blocking out the, the wind noise. We, you see me? See me we Yeah, we getting it in. We we getting it in. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're passing through South Carolina. We took some time. We rode up to, Morris and I rode up to Atlanta. And you know, we couldn't pass through Atlanta and not stop and see our people. So, so we stopped at my, at my brother's house. My sister came over. Then we left there and went to my aunt's house. We saw a couple people there. And then, you know, me and Reggie had to see each other. I couldn't pass through Atlanta and not, you know, see my man so we got uh what'd you say reggie yeah so we uh we got on the road from atlanta i guess it was probably about six o'clock what'd you say you're the only one home right now Oh, why is that? So, I'm, wait a minute, let me let me turn let me turn you up. Okay, you say that again. Oh, you had extra ticket to my guests. Oh man, I'd have, def I'd have definitely did that with you. Oh. Yeah, we'll. Yeah, we'll be back in. We'll be back in Pittsburgh tomorrow. Yeah, we're gonna get to uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and get to a hotel and call it a night.
uh, probably about an hour, hour and a half. So, okay. yeah, yeah, Charlotte's about halfway between Perry and home. So, it'll, it'll be like se it'll be like seven hours tomorrow, which is it's not that bad. It's, I mean, so. Yeah, that's true. We uh, we usually go. Um, let me think. We usually go for like 120 miles or two hours, whichever one comes first, and then take a break. So I think I think when I checked my GPS last, I think we're at like 90 miles from Charlotte, or something like that. And we just got back on the road. Just stopped and got some gas and all that stuff. Uh, not really. Not really. I'm, I'm actually okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually okay right now. So, uh, although I, I did have a five-hour energy earlier too. So, the, yeah, the big, biggest thing now is I'm looking up and I'm like, there's lightning in the sky, and I'm like, it looks like we're gonna run into a thunderstorm. So I'm hoping we make it to Charlotte before that happens. So, I mean, we have rain gear, so, and, and we used it on the way down because it rained real, real hard in West Virginia. Yeah, it, it came down on us for a minute, but the rain gear actually did its job. It kept us dry and comfortable because, you know, when we pulled over, we finally got out of the storm and we pulled over and took it off. Our clothes underneath were dry. So... I just, that, that doesn't mean I want to ride in the rain. <laughs> yeah. So. I know my brother, call me back, call me back in like 40 seconds. My brother saw me. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, it's me. The, um. Uh, I was on the phone. Somebody called me, so I'm, I'm on the other line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I don't like riding on the right side of this lane. You want switch? At all? Yeah. There we go. I think that's part of it. I think that's part of my. What do you call it? Ambidexter ambidexterity? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's some kind of security company or something. I don't know. That's why I said they're not really the police. I don't. I don't really know if they're the police or not. I, I was I don't see them Yeah. I mean, we're only going 72. I don't, I don't know what the speed limit is. I wonder if there's a way to get a prescription visor on your helmet. What kind of prescription are you? Like, just like for my glasses. Like the same one I would have if I was wearing glasses. I didn't know that you wore prescription glasses. Um, I haven't, I haven't owned a pair since I had that Ford Flex. I think I left them in a the little compartment up above the interior light. But I wasn't going to New Jersey to get it. <laughs> um, but I usually would wear them at night when I was driving at night or driving in the rain. Driving in the rain and in the dark is just an absolute no. That would that would make me pull over. That was what I was trying to say when we were on our way down, and they were steady trying to push 75, 80 in the rain, I'm like, I can't see. Right. 